Joe Biden, he has gotten up to the podium over the past couple years, and he has been saying that the Bidenomics is the place you want to be. He has been saying that he is doing a phenomenal job with the economy and that jobs are skyrocketing. They've been being filled at a rapid pace, his words. Um, he was lying to us. He was lying to us all, unfortunately. Let's tune in and see what's actually going on here in Joe Biden's economics. Job growth across the U.S. slowed last month in a sign the labor market may be cooling this spring. The Labor Department says employers added 175,000 jobs in April. That's the smallest monthly job creation reported since October of last year. Unemployment increased marginally to 3.9%. It has hovered above 3.5% since last summer, but remains under 4%. Jared Bernstein is at the White House. He is the chair of the U.S. Council of Economic Advisors and joins us now. Jared, hmm. thanks very much for being with us. So I want to ask you about a recent CBS News poll that shows more voters from Michigan, Pennsylvania, and Wisconsin believe the economy was better under Donald Trump than it is now. Why do you think that is? Well, I think that people have been a lot, uh, through a lot since the uh, uh, pandemic, and uh, you certainly saw President Biden take office and make sure that uh, things really turned around pretty quickly. Uh, obviously, vaccines got out there much more efficiently, and one of the things you saw under this president was the job market really take off. And uh, if you look at where we are in terms of today's job market, I'm, and I mean today based on today's report, uh, it's a lot different than where we were four years ago. Uh, 15.4 million jobs on this president's watch, an unemployment rate like your graphic just showed, below 4% for 27 months in a row. That is a uh, record. We haven't seen that for 70 years. Um, we see now wages beating prices. That's really important for working families. Uh, wages are outpacing inflation. Now, we have more work to do when it comes to cutting costs, but if you actually ask people uh, what they think about the job market, if you poll them on that, polls very, very high, very solid uh, numbers. Uh, so this is a good, good, uh, good discussion that I wanted to bring to the people because we don't get to see this much. We don't get to hear about this often. And for a lot of us, a lot of us out there, I know it's been tough this year. I know it's been tough the past couple of years. Y'all are seeing eggs going up. Y'all are seeing cheese, bread, everything going up. And we're here wondering why this stuff is going up. We're, we're here wondering why fast food needs to get their prices changed, uh, uh, their, their salaries changed. We're wondering why people are not trying to uh, sweep the floors, why so much migrants are coming in. We're, we're wondering why all this is happening is because you know the united states is looking for people to fill up a lot of these jobs and honestly a lot of people a lot of people are not trying to work right now a lot of people are are trying to find ways to get around working in a nine to five and they're they're understanding that yes they need to work this type of this type of uh this type of job just to survive but at the end of the day it's not even helping it's not helping just because some people are getting raises doesn't mean that it's good for the economy as a whole because as soon as now the people get raises the money and the value of the dollar is going to start getting lesser and lesser and everything is going to start going up fast food restaurants are getting their 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 cash years are now getting twenty dollars an hour how do you guys expect that to roll over? It's not going to go well. Obviously, the prices of food is going to go up. The prices of the burgers is going to go up. The dollar menu is obviously not the dollar menu anymore. It hasn't been a dollar menu since 2013. That's been gone. But this is Bidenomics, y'all. This is Bidenomics. Um, in these kinds of polls about how he's doing on the economy. 
I think there are a couple of reasons for that. I mean, one of them is that if you actually ask people about this president's agenda in a more granular way, which is actually kind of useful because it doesn't invoke some of the partisanship that I think these polls get, is you, uh, you, get, you get numbers that are 80% or north uh, there, they're in. You know, the president just was out this week talking about replacing lead pipes. As you would imagine, that polls uh, way over 80%. Ask people about his manufacturing agenda, standing up domestic indu industries here, uh, it, uh, uh, semiconductors. If you actually ask folks about the specifics of the Inflation Reduction Act, the Infrastructure Act, the CHIPS Act in particular, semiconductor uh, uh, plants going up uh, across the country, these things poll north of 80%. And then secondly, look, prices are too high. The president says that every time he talks about it. And that's why he is working aggressively to cut costs on prescription drugs, to cut costs for health care, proposals to lower the cost of housing, to build two million homes, and to cut the cost of child care. Now, if you look at the ideas from the other... Because there's no way of him stopping. <laughs> there's no way of him stopping people from... Uh from getting the from uh, the the economy raising the prices of food and vegetables there's no way of him doing that it is too far gone it's too far gone yeah the dollar menu is gone sort of the spirit man they they been took that away from us man i know a lot of people is pissed about that other side of the aisle <laughs> they want to reverse every one of those policies and make it easier uh, for folks to evade, uh, for the wealthiest uh, people and their corporations to evade paying taxes. So that's a higher cost agenda. We're trying to push a lower cost agenda. Well, inflation does remain a big concern for many Americans. So what is the president doing to alleviate that? When might Americans see some relief from high prices? Well, of course, inflation is down 60% from its peak. Uh, and we have to continue uh, our work to move it down even further. I think groceries are an area that are particularly sensitive. And grocery inflation has been zero for the past two months. So we've made progress there. I think where you see... Man, why do I feel like they lying? They lying. Every time I go to the gas station, the prices ain't going lower. Every time I go to the grocery store, I'm like, dang, since when was it like seven dollars for some ben and jerry's ice cream no lie i i know they bringing the, the numbers here on the screen and saying yeah we stagnant we haven't inflation hasn't gone up in the last couple months but every time i go to the gas station i'm telling you every time i go in there the gas is going up every day cent by cent and i'm like dang i remember when it was 25 bucks to fill a tank now it's 40. Now it's 40. So if, if inflation is so good, please explain to us why then. <laughs> why are we seeing these high price changes? Shake my head. Directly trying to uh, lower costs and having some success. Prescription drugs, the cost of insulin, the cost of health care coverage. In every case, uh, th this president has implemented plans that have lowered those costs. By the way, in every case, uh, Republicans uh, want to reverse uh, that progress. So that's very problematic. If you take away uh, the Inflation Reduction Act, which lowered the cost of prescription drugs, that cost is going to go up. Now, he also has uh, very robust proposals, one to build two million affordable homes. And of course, we need to work with Congress to make that happen. So we're aggressively trying to build on the progress of lower inflation and even lower costs. But in terms of a time frame, Jared, as people try to look ahead and plan for their futures and budget for things like groceries and those tangible sort of everyday goods, what should they be looking at if there is any kind of potential uh, time frame in mind if the president is reelected? How long would it take for prices to come down? Well, again, I think one of the things we can look at is uh, numbers like uh, uh, the, the, those in the jobs report today. I mean, one of the things we saw in this job report is that if you look at the uh, share of women working in the workforce, the employment rate, uh, that's the highest it's ever been with data back to 1948. That is an historical record. Uh, we've talked about the, the record on the low unemployment. That's good. That's good. Shout out to Biden for doing that. Man. Got women taking over the jobs. 
They doing the tough jobs now. They doing the nursing. Ain't nobody want to be a nurse anymore. <laughs> Ain't nobody want to be a nurse anymore, but they doing the tough job as a nurse. That's a fact, though. That's a fact. But honestly, seriously, y'all, they are lying. They are lying. They're trying to say, oh, we're going to lower cost of health care. I don't go to the doctors every week. I'm going to the grocery store every week, though. I'm not going to the doctors every week. I'm going to the gas stations every week. By the time insurance done covers everything from, from my doctor's appointment, if I'm working at a job. So I'm, I'm kind of confused what y'all trying to lower this for. We want to see lower groceries. We want to see lower grass prices. We want to see higher paying jobs. We want to see more jobs available for people. We do want to see that. But at the same time, I gotta be, I gotta be, uh, I gotta, I gotta tell it like it is. We also gotta be equipped to, uh, to do these jobs. We also gotta be hustlers ourselves. We also gotta get to the grind. It's not, it's not gonna just fall in our laps. So, you know, it, it's, it's a, it's a sticky situation here. It's a sticky situation. If these polls are true, if these polls are true. Then, then it's a good thing. But at the end of the day, man, if you ask a, a, a random person on the street, ten random people on the street, they gonna tell you like it is, man. They they ain't feeling what they are saying right here, man. It's it's the complete opposite. I think we we also need to reference the fact that wages have been outpacing prices, real wage gains. Uh, for about 13 months in a row on a year-over-year -year basis. So paychecks are going further. And then I think to get right to the heart of your question, I think you have to, you have to ask who is fighting for whom. I mean, this is a president who is consistently fighting to cut taxes on the middle class and to ensure that the wealthy and the corporations pay their fair share, aggressively going after junk fees, whether it's credit card fees, airline fees, uh, in entertainment. He's having, you know, real, making real progress in cutting those junk fees and of course, again, on prescription drugs, on health care, uh, on the cost of insulin, these are measures that are in effect actively lowering, lowering costs uh, that the other side wants to reverse. You know, one way to stop all these people from taking y'all from having fees and and doing all this from your credit cards. Stop using your credit card. Stop using it. That's what they're not even telling you. They're not teaching you guys how to be successful, how to be okay, how to be debt free. A lot of these issues would not be a problem if people were debt free. But because everything is a capitalistic uh, mindset and mentality in the United States, people want stuff now. They're going to pay for it now, whether they got to borrow money and pay an egregious amount of interest or they're going to. Take it the slow way and, and pay for it cash and not not have to deal with the interest rates. That's the best thing to do is to not use the credit cards, not fold and go get a big old loan that you can't afford because you're not working enough or you don't make enough money and they still allowed you to get the loan. It's a trap that they put you in. It's a trap. It's a trap, and that's unfortunate. But let, let me know what you guys think about this down in the comments below. Uh, I I can see I can see that they are saying this. And, you know, I I don't know how much of it is true, but they're saying that the growth the growth the the job growth is slowing. It is slowing down. People are not trying to work. And honestly, I I understand. I understand. Nobody, nobody likes slaving away. Nobody likes doing that. So at least make it affordable for the people that that are asking for it. You don't have a credit card anymore. I don't blame you. I don't blame you, sort of spirit. It's a fact. I don't blame you because it's it's a death trap. It's a setup. It's a setup. That is how the high school housing crisis happened. They gave a whole lot of loans to people who couldn't afford it. See? See? And I was young. I was young during that time. I was very young at that time. 
And it, it is even worse right now. They are giving people loans with 8, 9, 10% interest on homes. And people are like, you know what? I, I just got to get in. I got to get a house. I got to get this loan. And they don't realize, like, this is a trap. It's a trap. It's a trap. That's unfortunate, though, man. That's unfortunate. Uh, shoot. Let me know how you guys feel about that. Let me know how you guys feel about that.